All right, geometry, we are taking our trig one step further and we're gonna find side lengths of an acute triangle in another way. How many different ways can we do it? Well, um, this is sort of fun and different. All right, your opening exercise. Go ahead, the best you know how, however you want, um, find the lengths of D and E. I'm gonna push pause. I want you to do this on your own as sort of a review, okay? You don't have to simplify anything, just go ahead and find lengths D and E. Go for it. All right, there's your answers. I solved the problem two different ways. Um, pick your way, doesn't matter to me. Uh, the second method, I compared, I set up ratios with the 30-60-90 triangle um, and solved it that way. That was the first way we learned how to solve these equations just by comparing it to known sides. Okay, go ahead and find this one. I'm pushing pause. Did you have a second to think about it? Well, um, the problem here is it's not a right triangle, or if it is, we don't know it. We haven't learned what to do when they're not right triangles yet, all right? So the trig ratios, when I compared my triangle to this one, um, two, one, square to three, when I compared the original triangle to this one to set up ratios, I can't do that for this one because it's not a right triangle or we aren't aware that it is because they haven't given us all the measures. So that's what we're going to talk about today is another rule, another way to find, sorry I had to sneeze, to find the measures of the sides of triangles um, even if they're not right. Cool? So we're going to go through a little bit of an explanation here. I'm going to give you the law, the rule, you can write that down, circle it, highlight it, and then I'm going to go through the proof, which try to follow along. You'll see why it works, just so you're not memorizing a, ran a random rule. You actually know why it works. Let's try it. So the rule is called the law of signs. It's a sign of angle A over side A is equal to the sine of angle B over side B, sine of angle C over side C. All right? So for an acute triangle with sides A, B, C, angle A, angle B, angle C, and the sides opposite them are A, B, and C, we have the law of sines. Um, let me draw a triangle. I have A, B, C, and across from A, angle A is little a, across from angle B is little b, and little c. Okay, we've done a lot of work with dropping an altitude in our triangle, and I'm using that. So I'm going to go through sort of the proof of this problem, and I'd love it if you try to follow along just to see how the law of signs is developed. Cool? Alrighty. So let's talk about sine C. Sine of angle C. Sine of angle C is, since I have a right triangle now, I know I just made a right triangle, but I have one. The sine of C is opposite over hypotenuse, okay? That works. So we know that H equals A, sorry, A sine angle C. We're all like, all right, that makes sense. Well, let's look at sine of angle A. That equals H over C. So we know that H equals C sine of angle A. Cool. That makes sense, no big deal. So since we know that H equals A sine angle C and H equals C sine angle A, we can actually write those equal to each other. Pretty awesome. Now, um, algebra, I'm gonna manipulate this a little bit and Move this underneath there, and this underneath there. Nope, going backwards. 
haha. -ha. I'm going to move this under there and this under there. So we have sine of angle C over little c equals sine of angle A over little a. Looks like we have the building blocks to our law of sines, don't we? Okay, so we're almost there. We need one more step. I need a new page, too. Okay, now we need to talk about sine angle B and B. Well, for that, I need a different altitude. So there's my new altitude. That looks like a 90 degree angle, right? <laughs> Thanks. Um, so an altitude from A gives us sine angle B is equal to opposite. Let's see. Opposite over, so this is a new H. Opposite over hypotenuse. So H over C. That was hard to see. Let's try that again. B, A, C, little c, little a, little b. New right angle, h. So sine of b equals opposite over, and this is my hypotenuse. Got it. So we do know that h equals c sine angle b. And from the previous page, um, we knew that h was equal to lots of other things. So let's go ahead and set up C sine angle B is equal to, oh, what did we have on the previous page? We had B sine angle C. That works. Because um, H was equal to two other things on the previous slide, which I hope you're taking notes and writing things down. So now I'm going to go ahead and do some algebra rearranging. And we can say that sine of angle C over C is equal to the sine of angle B over B, which is equal to the sine of angle A over A. I just wrote that in the reverse alphabetical order because that makes awesome sense. But we have it, okay? We have our law of sines. And I hope you can see why. This allows us to solve um, sides of triangles without having a right angle. Okay, we used the triangle shown here which these a, triangle ABC is not a right triangle, but we used sine, sine, cosine, and sorry, sine of A, B, and C because we made a right angle. We made two right triangles to find our, in here, we made two right triangles so that we can actually use sine, cosine, and tangent because sine, cosine, and tangent only work with right triangles and acute angles. So we made some right triangles. We proved that... Um, we can use the sine of an angle and find the sides of the triangle um, by constructing right angles, but you don't have to actually construct the right angles in your problems, and when we get to the examples, we'll see why. Um, the proof just shows how to get there, all right? So let's use the law of sines to find some unknown measurements. Here we have an example. A surveyor needs to determine the distance between two points A and B that lie on the opposite banks of a river. Uh, a point C is chosen 160 meters from point A on the same side of the river as A. The measures of angle BAC and ACB are 41 and 55 respectively, which are shown in the drawing. Approximate the distance from A to B to the nearest meter. So we're trying to find this. We don't have a right triangle but this is considered my C, my little c, and this is considered my little b. We don't know this measurement, but we do know they add to 180. 180 minus 41 plus 55. 84 degrees. Messy, sorry. So we can say that sine of 84 degrees over 160 equals sine of 55 degrees over x. Now we just cross multiply. I have x sine 84 equals 160 sine 55. And please remember, this is just a number. It's a ratio. So you just crunch the numbers just like anything. This is just a number. So to get x by itself, 
I have to divide both sides by this number, this number called sine 84. Crazy, I know. So 160 times sine 55, divide by sine 84. And I get x equals 131.8 meters, miles. We're at meters. So it's not too bad. The law of signs you thought was going to be hard, but you got it. Cool. Okay, go ahead and try these next two on your own. Um, and check your answers when you're done, okay? Try it on your own, though. I'm going to push pause. Notice how this question asked us to find sine of angle B. That's it. What's the ratio at angle B? Okay, we didn't have to use Pythagorean theorem to find the last side because we can't use Pythagorean theorem. We don't have a right angle. Um, so sine of angle B is 0 0.42. All right, try the next one. Um, push and pause. Okay, here, you have to read the instructions pretty darn clearly. A car is moving toward a tunnel carved out from the base of a hill. As the accompanying diagram shows, the top of the hill, H, is sighted from two locations, A and B. So they sight it from here, and they sight it from there. The distance between A and B is 250 feet. What is the height, H, of the hill to the nearest foot? Um, I can't do anything with this triangle unless I know this side, right? Um because it's the hypotenuse of the right triangle. I have a right triangle. Isn't that exciting? So once I find this side right here, then I can find H. I know this is 45 degrees because 90 and 45, that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this is H and that is H, just random information I'm telling you. So first, to solve this triangle, I need to know what this measurement is. Well, I have a straight line here. So 180 minus 45 gives me 135, and then if I add all these together and subtract one from 180, I have 15 up here. So that gives me the law of sines, sine of 15 over one, sorry, sine of 15 over 250. Sorry about that. Sine of 15 over 250 equals sine of 30 over x, which I did right here, and I got x. Now the second part, once I know x, I've got a right triangle. So sine of 45 um, is opposite over hypotenuse, h over what we just solved. Okay, cross multiply, h equals what we just solved times sine 45, so I get the height of the, what, hill, height of the hill. Yay. Okay, now let's go over the law of cosines. Um, okay, if we go, um, well, first I'm going to give you the law of cosines. C squared equals A squared plus B squared, which looks way like the Pythagorean theorem. And then we have 2AB cosine angle C. What we really have here is the square of one side. of the triangle is equal to the sum, oops, the sum of the squares of the other two sides minus twice the product of those other two sides oops and the important part the cosine of the angle between them. Okay, that right there. So we know 
what we're talking about. It's the cosine of the angle t between them. So if we know two sides and one angle. So two sides and one angle. Say we just know this angle. Um, and those two sides. Those are the only things we're given. We can use the law of cosines to solve for everything else. Okay, it comes from a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem, and um, we're actually not going to go over the proof of that right now, but that's all right. Um, if we just remember, we use the law of cosines for acute triangles in order to determine the side length of the third side. So when we are given this is the important part. When we are given two side lengths and the included angle measure, we can use the law of cosines. Let's try one. So our friend, the surveyor, from example one, is doing some further work. He's already found the distance between two points A and B from example one. Now he wants to locate a point D that is equidistant from both A and B on the same side river as A. So we know from the previous problem that this one right here is 132 meters. Okay, in the problem it says that Point D is equidistant from A and B. So let's just say this is little a, this is little b, but they're equal, right? They're equal. We know that the angle between um, segment AB and point D, they both measure 75 degrees. So what's the distance between D and A to the nearest meter? So we're looking for B squared is what we're looking for. So B squared equals the other two sides a squared plus 132 squared minus 2 times a times 132 times cosine 75. Now, in the problem it says that it's an isosceles triangle, so these two sides are equal. So I'm going to substitute b in for a, okay? I'm going to substitute b in so I'm going to have b squared equals b squared plus 132 squared minus oh, 264 b cosine 75. Okay, do some algebra. I got a b squared on both sides, so I'm going to subtract b squared from both sides. And I'm going to move this to the other side of the equal sign. Add 264b cosine 75 to both sides. 264b cosine 75 equals 132 squared. Divide both sides by the 264 and the cosine 75. And I'm left with b equals... 132 squared divided by 264 cosine 75. So let's do that. And I get B equals 273.7 meters. Scratch that. I just crunched the numbers again. I hit a, diff I hit a button wrong on my calculator. 255 meters. Cool. So Using the equation is not difficult. I know that I had um, two sides and an included angle, right? That's really big, isn't it? So that's wrong, actually. Two sides and an included angle. This was the side I needed to solve for. So the one I'm solving for and then the other two sides and an included angle. Okay, so the one I'm solving for, and then the other two sides, and the included angle. Let's try another one. So here we have parallelogram ABCD. 
His side lengths of 44 and 26 millimeters, and one of the angles has a measure of 100 degrees. So approximate the length of diagonal AC to the nearest millimeter. Well, we have to dig into our um, opposite angles and parallel lines and transversals to remember that, okay, if this one's 100, well, this one's 102, which means that this is 80 and this is 80. Okay, a parallelogram, um, adjacent angles are supplementary. So I just did that really quick. So now I have, if we are solving for, let me get a different color here. If we're solving for AC, that means I have two sides and an included angle. So AC squared equals 44 squared plus 26 squared minus 2 times 44 times 26 times the cosine of the included angle. All right? So I just need to crunch these numbers. And I'm going to go ahead and do that in my calculator. 44 squared plus 26 squared minus 2 times 44 times 26 times cosine of 80. That can't be right. Let me check. Will you believe I forgot to take the square root of it? <laughs> so AC squared equals, um, I got such a large number, I was so confused. I went and checked to make sure my calculator was in degrees and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Oh, I just forgot to take the square root of both sides. So square root of that would be AC equals 47, which makes way better sense, right? All right, done for today. We'll practice a few of these tomorrow. Make sure you have those two equations written down somewhere so you can access them.